Hello guys, welcome back, I'm Julian, I'm here to do my reaction video for Season 3, Episode 19 of The Fosters. This time the title of the episode is The Show. And yes, I'm excited, I'm really, really excited for this episode. Uh, the previous episode was, was amazing, was pretty great. We had a really nice conversation between... Um, Callie and Brandon and I think that it was so beautifully done because you know it came from a place that they both sadly can relate and it just speaks volumes on how tragic their love story is because like um, everything is there for them to work as a couple but they can't you know, because of, of, of them being now, now Callie being adopted and all of that. Um, so, yeah, but it just speaks about how tragic uh, their love is. Um, and kind of like perfectly mirrors uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, um, but without the part at the end of Romeo and Juliet, you know. So, um yeah, I'm really excited for this movie. I'm uh, up for this movie, for this episode, uh, to see how how things are gonna end, and especially because I want to see what they're gonna do for the season finale, which I'm gonna react right after I finish this one. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, I'm really, really excited, really happy that I get to share with all of you. This season has been a ride, and I think I have taken less time to finish it than I did with the previous season, right? think so i don't know but anyways i'm excited i'm ready i hope you guys are excited and ready as well you guys are fantastic uh and yeah thank you for everything that you do to support the show and to support the reactions and to support me so thank you and yeah for now i think that's about it i hope you guys enjoy give it a lot of thumbs up subscribe comment hit the notification bell Anka reaction always posted for some patreon Thank you so much for being here, and without further ado, let's just begin with Season 3, Episode 19. Did I say 18? No, it's 19 of The Fosters. Here we go. <laughs> okay, just wanted to work out the use of art. Where are you? She's about to start. Where is she? Yeah. On love. Neighbors to... reporting what sounded like domestic violence. Sorry, gonna miss the show. Yeah, me too. Okay. I feel like something is. Oh, okay, you know what? I just want to say she looks extremely hot. Like she looked extremely hot before, but like I, I find her extremely hot right now. I'm just, I want to point that out. This play is kind of dumb. Wait. What do you mean? If Romeo and Juliet just told somebody they were in love and already got married, maybe they could have worked it out and it wouldn't be so tragic. I mean, sure, it would have been hard on the families and everyone, but they would have had to figure it out, right? Secrets mm. are like the worst. They didn't have to die. They didn't have to die, no, absolutely not. Okay, okay. I'm a mom, Brandon. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Oh. And if you can't handle that, then... I, I, I never said I couldn't handle it. Well, you might as well have the way you responded to that woman on the beach yesterday. I'm not his father. You just you blurted it out like oh. she was accusing you of something. Okay, I'm sorry. That's what this happened. Is kind of new to me. Brandon, Bra like, the, let's, be, let's be real. He is 17. He's not ready to be a stepdad or anything. You know, if you have a cast this talented and you want to make them sing and, and, and like have a beautiful kind of musical episode with a play where it actually makes sense, do it, you know, go off and do it. But don't overdo it like they do in Riverdale. <laughs> Based on what dispatch said, we have calls for entry. No, listen, I know this guy, okay? I arrested him last year and he had a gun. So we wait for the negotiator. Do you really want to do that? What if the wife is hurt? If I remember correctly, there's a clear view through the back door. Okay, all right, take your team around back, see what you can find. Okay. It's soft. What light through yonder window breaks? Look, don't shoot her, okay? I'm not allowing that. You already shot her once, right? 
Don't do it again, man. You know, you're doing great out there. Yeah, I, I know. I know, just, baby. I know. <laughs> this is really hard. Why? I know I shouldn't say this, but... She's still in love? Because I still love you. Oh, shit. But tell me. Why didn't you answer my letter? What letter? <laughs> okay. Vogue, well. That's perfect. What happened with, with Gabe, though? Well, I, I never got it. What did it say? That I still love you, too. Uti, hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, baby, you are killing it. Come here. Oh damn, oh damn, oh damn. Oh damn. Oh god, do not stress me out on this fine day. Please. Sex is where the real bonding happens. Like with me and Matt. When we had sex, it really took things to the next level. And it really brought us so much closer. Yeah, okay, your insecurities are showing. Trust him? He's just not the kind of guy who would just have sex with a girl and then dump her. <laughs> You're about to find out that he yeah. is. <laughs> if that really happens. What are you gonna do? <gasps> like the way, the way, the way they stress me out, the way they like to stress me out. <gasps> She better be okay. Is she wearing a bulletproof vest? Because if she's wearing one, like, honestly, Steph, why? Why? I, I just... Oh. Hold your fire. Suspect is down. Suspect is down. Requesting medical stat. <gasps> Are you kidding me, Steph? Are you kidding me, Steph? You, did, you just did that! Do you like him? Yeah, I do. Then is it? as a friend. Oh. I, I I'm not gay. So why did you kiss him? I was just so so upset about Connor, and I, I want to make him feel better. You could have hugged him. <laughs> you didn't need to kiss him if you are not gay. Maybe he's just processing his feelings as well. But like, I'm just telling you, from my point of view, you could have hugged him. So listen, um. I shouldn't have kissed you. No, I'm, I'm glad you did. I'm not really over Connor, but I realized I, I can get over him. And, yeah. you know, maybe there's someone else out there. Mm, I don't want you to get over Connor, though. Oh, you forgot something. I mean, what would have happened if we told? You want to tell moms? Come on, let's go. No what? way, wait. She's just asking. What? We can't. We can't what? Tell mom. Why not? Because you know why. No, I don't. Tell me, why can't we? Oh, damn it. It's always so complicated with them. I hate this. Oh my god. I hate this because, like, you can see. How much love they have for each other and like just you know they have to walk away from it and it's just so it's so painful Within three hours we'll fare Juliet wake <gasps> eyes look your last no no! Arms. Take your last embrace. And lips. Okay, it's so a retractable knife, okay. I thought Nick went crazy and changed the blades. What? Talented kids! My god! My dear lord! My dear lord! Oh my dear. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's 
just unbelievable that after what that guy did to Jude and Kelly, he still got the chance to foster another child and now killed him. Okay, guys, so that was the end of season three, episode 19 of The Fosters. Next episode, season finale, though this one was so powerful, could as well serve as a season finale, but it isn't. But my God, my God, this episode, it was, it was, it was beautifully done. I think that, you know, the confu confusion I had at the beginning was because like, I felt that there was some gap between what happened at the end of the previous episode and how we start the episode. But I think that it was very beautiful that they tell the story and, you know, the singing and everything and this, you know, Roman Juliet and everything, you know, and it's parallel to so many things that are currently happening to them. Or it takes, you know, place and it's it's... It's, it was honestly done very, very well by mixing the two together instead of just having some scenes before the show and then we watched the show for just, like, in this opportunity, they had the 43 minutes to do the play, you know, and in the middle of it, they fill it with, with the scenes uh, of our characters and how they got to uh, the point where they are in the play, you know, so... I think that was extremely, extremely smart of the writers. I didn't really understood it at first, but then once I got used to it, I think it was done so well. Like, let's just go around the, like, on the minor things. Well, not minor, but not, like, major part of the storylines. The performances by every single person were just <sighs> beautiful. Mariana killed it matt killed it the other chick though matt's girlfriend killed it but then she was being annoying you know but whatever but she was extremely talented everyone who was part of the musical of the of of, of the play was just extraordinary and you you know you're led to believe right that um matt and um Brandon, especially Brandon, right? No, Madam and, and and the the two of them actually they created this whole thing, you know. They took uh this play and they made it their own, I think. It was just so perfectly done. Uh and like so creative and like th this is a story that we all know, you know, everyone knows the story of Romeo and Juliet and how it ends and how it happens and everything. Uh but to take a a, a, a a, a different route with with it. I think it was just excellent, and it played so well, and it was so so freaking good. Um, but yeah, yeah, I thought it was extremely good uh, and extremely powerful, you know. And like it just shows you how talented everyone involved is, you know. Um, the thing is that. Um, while the the play was happening, it 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 did mirror what like mostly what was happening between Brandon and Callie and you know Mariana and and Matt, but mostly Brandon and Callie because unlike Ma Mariana and Matt, they actually have a chance whether if they want to get back together. Brandon and Kelly do not have that choice, you know, and it feels so tragic. Of course, it's not going to end the same way Romeo and Juliet ends, but um, it just like you you look at them and there is no way you can sympathize with them that you don't feel bad for them because like I understand everything legally how it could not be, you know. But like I have said many times, they did not and they never saw each other as siblings or as anything other than like having an attraction for one another, you know, because they were young and like it has been just one year as well. And they found each other and they, they are able to like together talk about 
everything. There is no limits on the things that they can talk about. So they rely on each other a lot. They are there for each other when they know they can't tell anything to anyone else, you know. Uh, but these two kids hold this, this love that they have for each other uh, and, and they are not supposed to, and they hate that, you know, and I hate that because I think that they, the writer should have dare if they introduce Robert, uh, on the previous season, they should have dare to allow Ka Callie to be adopted or not be adopted, but, but to be with her dad, you know, not living outside of her home with the Adams with the Adam Fosters, but to to not have that legal reason on why she can be with legal and moral reason why she can be with with Brandon. I think they should have been smart enough to just eliminate that completely because they have such a powerful love story with them that is so unfair that it's not being touched, you know, and they can't, and they just go around with the, with the, we can be together. It, it is, you know, I guess they went with this episode, they kind of confirmed that they were doomed from the start. They were destined for her, their love to die or for both of them to have to kill the love that they have for each other, just as Romeo and Juliet did that and killed themselves because they were, you know, um, there's a mosquito in my room. Um, anyways, because they, you know, they killed themselves because they couldn't live without the other. But in this opportunity, I think that the pressure between them is for them, you know, it's, it's as tragic as Romeo and Juliet because they have to kill the love. They have to do, do it themselves and kill the love that they have for each other. You know, and at the end of the day, what what is there, you know, what is left for, for them? I know they're still very young. There will be many people that they will meet and they could fall in love again. But the fact is that this love could have been something better for both of them. And sadly, the odds were just against them. The universe was against them. And those stories of love and like, you know, um, not being able to to be with that loved one. They, they, they are very attractive, you know, very attractive relationships. And I feel like they could have given Brandon and Kelly a real fighting chance. Like, if just I, I imagine how epic they could be. But just as Romeo and Juliet, you will never know because, like, you know, they had to just get rid and like just move on from those feelings um because there was nothing else they could do i mean at least Romeo and julia thought that that was something like that was like she they couldn't do anything else and brandon kelly really think that they can't do anything else you know so it's it's so freaking sad but it makes their relationship even more epic in my opinion so i am like you know, it's so freaking sad, you know, because men, if they could have given them one fighting chance, I think they could have been incredible together, incredible together. And uh, it makes me sad, you know, it makes me sad. Um, anyways, what else happened? Well, like I said, the play was mirroring a lot of things. Then, of course, we have Matt and, and, and Mariana. And, you know, I think that Mariana has grown enough from her experience with Wyatt that she should be able to say to Nick, look, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings. This is something I figure it out. And sadly, you know... Um, uh, I don't feel the same way. I'm still in love with Bad, and I, I can be with you. I, I think that it will be better. I mean, Nick has his ideas already about it. I think he took the letter as well. So, but I think that uh, he deserves the truth. You know, he deserves the truth. And the other chick, Zoe, I think is her name. I don't know. 
also deserves the truth, with which I don't know if she's gonna like it, but she deserves to know the truth because I, I don't want them to cheat, you know? They're, I don't need another cheating storyline with Mariana, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Jesus was MIA the entire episode, which was kind of weird because, like, his sister was there at the play. He helped build the sets, but he wasn't there. <laughs> but anyways, um, you have also Jude dealing with his breakup with, with Connor. And, like, it just broke my heart, the, the, the fact that he did that, that, that he went through that. But we all get our heart broken at some point. But, like... Honestly, I, I miss Connor. I miss Connor. And I think that, you know, those first loves are really hard to forget, you know? And I don't know, maybe if someday he is still, he comes back to town, just give them a chance. Like, that's all I ask. Just give them a chance, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, the kid, what, I don't remember his name, though. It, that's so fucking sad, you know. Um, he gets taken out of one home because he's being bullied and, and beaten up and things like that. Only to end up in another home. And this time, the guy killed him. Like, how fucking insane. And how how bad, like... How are you going to feel, you know, that you could have prevented this? I don't know why they gave him the opportunity to continue being with with them when we know what happened with, with Jude and Callie. Like, we know what happened, what that guy did. Like, he had a gun. And, like, you know, and how, like, it just imagine that, Right. Just imagine that. And, like, what? Are you telling me that the guy shot and, like, accidentally killed the kid? I think he was already dead and that's why he was freaking out. Right? But, like, how fucking sad, man. Another... A, a kid who had a, a, his entire future ahead of him and, like, his life is taken away because of what? Because the system didn't do their job right? It's so fucking unfair, you know? And I just feel terrible because I, I have also watched a lot of, like, you know, docuseries and things like that. And I know that this is not an isolated event that happens that social workers do not pay enough attention. I know that sometimes they are overworked, you know, they have a lot of things that they can handle. But, like, the system overall to fail these kids when the first thing anyone, anyone in the world, when there is an issue, when you want to talk about, I don't know, um, feminism, sexism, when you want to talk about LGTL, oh my God, LGTB, L, oh my God, LGTBQ+, plus, huh? Like, I don't know what happened. Uh, subjects with with kids. We always, like, society is always, like, it's, you know, people are always like, oh, what about the children? They shouldn't do this. They shouldn't do that. And you're like, you know. And then there are moments like this ones where you think, where are all these people who think that kids should not be taught about the different sexualities and genders? You know, where are they where, when they actually need the help, you know? It's so disgusting, in my opinion. It's so freaking disgusting that people do that, you know? They, they put themselves off like, what will the children think? Think about the children. But at the minute the, the, the child actually needs help, they're like, no, 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 you're someone else's problem, not mine. You know, and look how it ends sometimes, you know. Lucky for Callie and Jude, they were able to, ex to escape. But not all of them were going to be able to escape that home. And we see that he couldn't, you know. And that just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart. Um, the lady, like, what is it? Courtney, right? The girl that, 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 that uh, Brendan is dating... 
uh, she was like freaking out <laughs> about, uh, you know, she he she really needs to be, you know, to tell him, he needs to tell her that if, uh, what was I saying? If he he really needed to tell her. That's what I mean. Uh, whether if he's over Callie or not. I don't think she deserves that. But let's be real. Brandon is 17. He sometimes is very self-centered, you know. And sometimes, even though he has a lot of siblings, he has this only child personality sometimes, you know. So for him to be called like, oh, you're the dad. And he will be like, no, 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 man. I didn't make this child. No, 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 no. Like, I could understand his, him freaking out, you know, because he's 17 at the end of the day, you know. So it's something that I, I didn't thought he could manage, you know. So, yeah. Um, but like I said, this episode was, was, was good. Tragic, you know, tragic love stories. And tragic moments like the one that we see at the end. Um, we are going to deal, I'm going to guess, with the repercussions of it on the next episode, which is the season three finale. So I'm going to watch it and I'm going to enjoy it. And, you know, you guys let me know your thoughts on it, you know. Um, and I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this episode. So hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys liked it. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, hit notification bell. Uncut reaction always posted first on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys like it. Continue supporting for more. Thank you for everything. And I'll see you guys next time for the season three finale of The Fosters. That's it. Bye, guys.